I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Tom Jocelyn and Bill Rajo, the Foundation for the Defense of Democracy's Long War Journal here. Tom is on his way to testify to the U.S. Congress Homeland Security about Syria. And I ask a general question, Tom, because the American people tomorrow night will listen to the president make a case for striking against the Assad regime in response to the chemical weapons attack of August 21st. However, at the same time, the American people are puzzled. You can see it in the, in the uh, reporting all the time now. How is it that striking against the Assad regime is in, at the same time in support of the rebels who are dominated in certainly eastern Damascus area, but in other parts of the country, by al-Nusra slash al-Qaeda. Sometimes it's al-Nusra front, sometimes it's al-Qaeda in the Iraq and Levant. So, can you help the American people understand how it is that we're fighting the al-Qaeda remnant in Afghanistan, Pakistan, and in the Arabian Peninsula, but we're launching airstrikes that support their mission in Syria? Well, the bottom line is there is no remnant, of course, in Afghanistan and Pakistan. It just totally misunderstands the al-Qaeda threat, that argument that comes out of the Obama administration about it. Uh, but simultaneously in Syria, you have basically the, the biggest proof that that whole model for understanding al-Qaeda was wrong all along. Because right now, inside Syria today, al-Qaeda has an army, has a small army. Um, and, and, you know, easily, I think, when you add up the direct uh, fighters under al-Qaeda's control, plus the groups that are closely allied with al-Qaeda, these are groups that constantly fight alongside al-Qaeda's affiliates inside Syria, you're easily talking in the tens of thousands, so upwards of even 50,000 fighters on any given day who are either directly al-Qaeda or allied with one of the um, Salafi jihadist groups that is closely linked to al-Qaeda inside Syria. Now, that is a very different story than we're going to drone to death four or five commanders in northern Pakistan, the war is over. You know, there's a big difference. If you, if you think back to September 11th, 2001, and you told the American people that al-Qaeda has a small army in Syria right now, and that they're basically gaining every day, and they control much of the northern part of the country, um, that would not be something we took lightly at all. And yet, right now, it's not really sinking in, in sort of our approach to Syria at all. All the, the conversation is about these limited strikes against Assad to punish him for using chemical weapons. And Assad is a despicable character, and believe me, I, I've long argued that he should go, even before the revolution here that began in 2011. But you know, on the other side of the coin, we're not, we have not done anything to really stem the tide of al-Qaeda's advances, and that's really why this has become such a problem. Bill, the number I've been given is about 25,000 uh, rebel forces dominated by the jihadists were involved in the offensive against, in the eastern part of the country, eastern Damascus. Is that a number that you're comfortable with, 25,000, in, in many groups? You're talking about jihadists allied with al-Qaeda? Right, uh, jihadists. Al jihadist. Do you have that number on your site, Bill? 25,000. You know, I, I've, I've heard numbers, uh, so a number I've heard is about 70,000 70, fighter, fighters. Let, let, me, let, me check with, let me check with Tom. Tom, 25,000, is that too small for the, what was involved in the offensive over in August? Throughout the, the offensive in August actually occurred in multiple areas, including Latakia right. and elsewhere. And so, no, I don't think it's too small. I, I think that's a, it may be too small by ten or twenty thousand, but it's not too small. It's it's on the right order of magnitude. I mean, problem here is that you know we're dealing with very fuzzy math and fuzzy numbers right. in terms of counting who's on the ground. But in Latakia, for example, which is on the coast and is the Assad family stronghold, it's absolutely crystal clear that Al Qaeda led the fighting against the, the Assad regime forces and into those Alawite towns. And then on their side were even free Syrian army brigades who were taking orders from them and during that fighting. So it's uh, it's not too small. It's it's right. On, I would say it's right in the sweet spot of the estimates. I would All right, say. twenty-five to fifty thousand. We're establishing tens of thousands. Those are you know divisions. That's what we're talking about uh, in fighting brigades. They're not ignorant. They're well armed. They're well they're well stocked, but they do not have heavy equipment and they don't have air. Note that. Now we go back to Afghanistan, Pakistan. This is in the borderland area. Bill, you're reporting that Mullah Sadgin Zadran, an al-Qaeda commander, was killed in a drone strike. Uh, first of all, who is he? And have we got to confirm on the death? And we're killing al-Qaeda ones and twos in Waziristan. Why? Well, first, uh, it's not a confirm. Uh, this is just an initial report from Pakistani intelligence officials. There are reports from... Pakistani tribals in the area that he may have been buried. Uh, Samosan Gin Zadran is a the Taliban, the Haqqani Network commander, 
but he's the Taliban uh, shadow government for Paktika province, um, which is one of the Haqqani strongholds in right. Afghanistan. And he again, he's another designated by the U.S. He's just like Badrud, and we discussed one of Siraj Haqqani's top deputies. Um, he's also the individual who's holding Bo Bergdahl, who is the American soldier who was captured by the Taliban uh, years ago. All right. Now, he's an al-Qaeda commander. The Pakistanis are saying he's dead. That's not a confirm. No. Not until Bill sees a video from the Taliban itself. But, Bill, this al-Qaeda man that we're saying we're hunting, he's on the specially designated global terrorist. If he's in Syria, we're fighting on his side, Bill? Have I got the irony right here? You know, you know th that is the irony of all this. I mean, what we'll effectively do if we do start bombing the Assad regime is we're going to serve as the air force for Al Qaeda. Um, for Sanguin, you know, for Sanguin no himself. Way, no other way to look at that. Sanguin will be cheering on the tomahawks. Uh, Mr. Jocelyn, I check with you because you testify before Congress. Does this pumble, puzzle members of Congress that if you're in Afghanistan, you're our enemy, and if you're in Syria, you're our ally? Well, I think it certainly speaks to the fact that we have absolutely no strategy for fighting al-Qaeda and associated movements around the globe. And that right now, everything is very ad hoc. It's onesies and twosies, and sort of there's no real comprehensive understanding of the threat or what's happening. And so that's why you get into situations like this, where, including in Libya, where basically we did nothing to stop al-Qaeda from taking and associated groups from taking over large portions of Libya, of eastern Libya. Right. That's what gave us Benghazi. That's what gives us, you know, the night patrols. And today, and to this day, in Benghazi are done by basically an al-Qaeda-linked group. They're managing security there. You know, we're pretending like we led from behind and defeated Gaddafi. Meanwhile, al-Qaeda takes over security in some of these cities. So I think that's basically the, the disconnect here is there's just absolutely no comprehensive understanding of what's really going on. Tom Jocelyn on his way to Congress to testify to Homeland Security. Bill Rajo, both gentlemen of the Foundation for the Defense of Democracy's Long War Journal. It appears complicated. It cannot be simplified. War is a disaster. I'm John Batchelor.